Okay, what am I doing here? Today I've got a combo. Uh, what year is it? 2008. It doesn't start. Just gonna start seeing what's going on with it. No codes. Um, let's look at the data. Main relay's active. Fuel pump relay's inactive. Checking it's in neutral. I'm going to crank it, see if that changes. Oh, i got to put my foot on the clutch. Okay. Inactive. I could hear. I could hear the fuel pump. So I'm not sure why it's saying it's inactive. Uh, now it's saying it's active. It just took a while for this to update. Let's see if I just change this. Really all I want to know is, um, fuel pressure. At the moment. There's two. Bring that one up as well. Okay, let's have a look at them. Is it desired? I hope this doesn't go out when I... Crank it. Yeah, it did. I didn't help. Same as before, but I've gone into OBD2 or EOBD. Putting air flow, real pressure is showing nothing. It's cut out because I've turned the ignition off. Okay, I'll go and check something. What I'm going to do here is check the sensor because if it's in zero for fuel rail pressure, so here's the fuel rail pressure, three wires, got one side of the multimeter connected to the battery negative, and that's what we have here because it's not connected. So I'm going to go into the first wire, red wire, if it'll slide in, there it is. 5 volts, right? So now we're going to check the, the other one, center one. Sometimes, not always, it's the signal. 0.5 volts, so that's looking like it's working. 0.5, so we've got no fuel. That's the ground. So I'm going to just unplug it quick. And see what happens to the signal. Another thing I could do with the ground, just to be sure it's not an open wire, is wiggle the wires, like I'm doing. Really, you want that to stay the same. If it moves about, it could be an open wire. So what I've done here is moved that lead. It's now in the battery positive, so we should have minus 12 here, if that ground's okay. And we do have minus 12. Well, 12 in this case. Yeah, I got the leads the wrong way around. So the green lead is on the battery positive. So that's why it's saying that. I'm going to put that back into the negative. So that's our ground. Back into the signal. Let's see if I can unplug this. I can unplug the sensor right now. So it's 0.5 before I unplug it. Unplugged it. I've got 5 volts on the signal wire. Still in the middle one. It's not always the signal wire, but usually it is. But it's 5 volts unplugged because 5 volts is coming from the engine ECU over here. So we've got 5 volts supply on the red wire. 
We also have 5 volts coming down the center wire, the signal wire, that I've not always explained. That's it's the center that's pulling that down. Needs a good ground and a 5 volt power, that will plug it in. And then there's the 5 volts. I've got a good contact. 5 volts. Plug it in, and it goes to 0.5 because the sensor is pulling it down to that. So we know that it's working, there's no pressure in there, so that's why it's 5 volts. So I'm going to start doing fuel pressure test. Okay, another thing you can check here with the ignition on front probing. So you know, going into the one that was the ground, we have the ground. If we want to check that, we could connect the test light to battery positive. And when we touch the battery negative, the test light lights. So if I touch this, that's the ground and the test light lights that we would expect. But with this, we've got two 5 volts with it disconnected. The signal and the 5 volt supply. So if you want to know which one's which, Test light now on battery negative. And touch this pin here that we know is the supply. Test light lights. Dimly, but it still lights. And it doesn't put it down much. If I move this to the signal, it won't light. I'll show you. Right, so I'm on the center one, it's not lit. This is timed out. I'll just put it back onto bolts. So I'm going to touch this again. On the signal, if it was 5 volts, I pulled it down, it's millivolts. This didn't light. So if you don't know which one it is, you see two 5 volts. The one that doesn't like a test light, the one that doesn't light the test light is the signal. Now sometimes it's the other way around, and you might have two grounds, two zeros, and one power. And if it was like that, it would be the same thing. You'd be able to put the test light and test it the same way as we did with the ground and battery negative. You would have one of them would light bright, and that would be the ground. The one that was the signal, and I'm talking about if it was a pull-ups pull-up design. If that was a zero volts and you touched it, it wouldn't light the test light with it connected to battery positive. So the one that doesn't light the test light, in this case we've got two 5 volts from the ECU, and that's just so that you know which wire is which. If you don't have a wiring diagram or pin inf information, you can check it with a test light and see which one's which, provided the wires aren't faulty. And uh, I've never really explained what I'm doing so much, so I thought I'd just go over that a little bit more today. In case it helps somebody in the future. Just try and make a, a, a fuel pressure test. I didn't have the right thread for this. That's too fine, nothing in the kit. So what I've done is kind of not using it exactly how it should be intended. I've just got it set like that, so I'm putting the pressure gauge actually on the other side. Nothing should come out of there. It's not going to go through the engine, so basically I'm deadheading it. I just want to see what pressure I get on here. Put the ignition on. It's just had the prime from putting the ignition on and it's up to like... Well, it's gone, it's released it. So it's going back. It's going back through here. Try it again. We'll prime it again and see what I get to. I'm just putting this on to prime. Less than two bar. At 26 psi. There we go. We're getting some fuel here. I'm not sure what the pressure should be, but I would have thought that's enough. Disappears. I don't know why, don't know why that's doing. I would have thought it would have held. So this is dead headed. So how is that going back? I don't 
Okay, ready. Okay, ready. Okay, ready. This is MTA, so I gotta change it by 10. That's fine. That's 150 almost MPA, which is 1,500 bar. So the pump's good. Now I'm gonna move this onto the common rail and check it again. Okay. It's probably gonna piss out everywhere. Okay. Okay, that's fine, thanks. Okay, I'm in the car, back probed at the pressure sensor. Everything's put back to how it was. So what I'm going to do is look at the uh, live data of the rail pressure. And then compare it to this. See if one of them changes. And if this still says nothing when that one goes up, because with the mechanical gauge, we've seen that they both, that goes up with the mechanical gauge. So the pressure sensor is working. I've also seen that we had about 1.3 volts and the car that I was looking at that's got the same engine was 1.1 volts with it running. So I'll, I'm just bringing up just the, um, kind of bring up just the one thing for the fuel rail pressure. Right there, KPA. I go back. I could graph it. Maybe not. I'm graphed. What's going on with this? I think it's my gloves. There. Right, now I'm ready to crank it. We can look at both of these. It's stuck at zero. Getting pressure coming up. It's almost wanting to start. I lost the communication on here. One thing I did see that this never changed its pressure even when that did. That's a bit of a pain. Let's concentrate on this one now. Oh there, it's going up. This is as far as I got today. I've checked for the fault codes, there wasn't any. And I had, um... I had fuel going from the fuel tank. On the low pressure side, it's getting to the high pressure fuel pump. And I had fuel at the high pressure fuel pump that was high enough. And I also checked it at the rail in case it was going to be a leak off from one of the injectors that was too much leak off. Or the return back through uh, the fuel metering valve. Or the fuel flow valve on the fuel rail and there wasn't any leak off there it was the same pressure as I was getting at the pump so my next test is to I, I think there's plenty of fuel anyway and the fuel sensor has shown that there's fuel and I compared it to a car that actually works and it was getting slightly higher voltage 1.3 volts when I was cranking it then the car that runs, that was 1.1 volts when I was when, with it running. Um, so, so I got plenty of fuel, but the scan tool never updated it. It was always saying it was zero KPI. Or KPA, I mean. So I don't know why that. Is. I also don't know why the scan tool kept cutting out. Is it losing power to the engine ECU because I'm cranking it for too long? I've got a few more checks that I want to do. I want to go next time. I'm going to check the injectors. Make sure they're getting a pulse. Make sure I'm getting a crank and a cam signal maybe. 
but I haven't had any time to do any more on it, but when I do I'll d update this video with some more. But at the moment I know enough to know that the, the, um, the fuel side of it, the pressure side, all seems okay. So I'm not too concerned about that. Just want to know what's going on. Am I losing a signal? So the next one I'm probably going to be checking the electrical side rather than the fuel pressure and the fuel flow side. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments. I'll be interested to see them. Um, otherwise, when I get a chance to get back to this little van, I'll film some more and upload it as a part two. Thanks for watching.